Welcome to episode 27 of Therese Talk. I'm your host, Therese Main. By day, I co-host a morning radio show on a network in New York and Pennsylvania. By night, I'm a podcaster. If you're a woman like me who loves Jesus and just wants to serve her family and community a little bit better, you're in the right place. Would you take a moment right now and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode? Mother's Day is not something that was celebrated in the Bible. You could thank Hallmark for that. But God does give us some great examples in the moms that he used in the Bible. And their traits are something we can strive for, whether we have children or not. Patience, faithfulness, and blessings are what we're looking at today. Sarah was childless because she was not able to conceive. That's from Genesis 1130. Later in Genesis 15, God tells her husband Abraham that he will have as many offspring as there are stars in the sky. Now, that's hard to believe, seeing as he was married to a woman who would not be able to conceive. Throughout their story, we don't always see patience front and center. Sarah actually laughed that God would do what he said. Aren't you glad that God does not depend on our level of faith? <laughs> but 25 years later, Isaac was born. Sarah was patient, not always in the most perfect way. In Genesis 21, Sarah says, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son at his old age. Yep, sometimes God does such amazing things in our life that we can't help but laugh. One of my favorite verses is in Hebrews 6.15. It's actually talking about Abraham when it says, after he patiently endured, he received the promise. And it's like that sometimes. We're enduring, but if we do it patiently, we'll see God's promise every single time. Now, that promise doesn't always look like we thought it would or hoped it would, but if it's from God, it's always perfect, and it's always right on time. Do you believe in miracles? Maybe after the account of Sarah and Abraham, you believe a little bit more. So here's another husband and wife getting up there in age about to have a child, Elizabeth and Zechariah. In Luke 1, we read that they were faithful in obeying God. Now, that's important because during the time they lived, people thought that if you didn't have kids, you had sinned against God. That wasn't the case then, and it is not the case now. Sometimes God has a plan that we can't see. In the case of this couple, it was especially stinging because Zechariah was a priest. His life was on display for his whole congregation to see. And an angel approaches him at one point and says, your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you and many will rejoice because of his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. Good news, but really? Shut up. <laughs> he didn't really believe. So God did shut him up. Can you imagine your husband being mute for your entire pregnancy? Maybe that's a warning not to doubt God. Elizabeth knew how special her baby was. Her faithfulness came to fruition when her son was born and they named him John. He went on to become John the Baptist and he helped Jesus. What an encouragement to be faithful, even when things are hard. Speaking of Jesus, we can't forget his mother, Mary. She was blessed. Luke one thirty one tells us about her visit with the angel. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, she didn't really understand how it would happen right away, but she stood strong in her faith. It was actually her cousin Elizabeth the mother of John, who said she would be blessed among women. We see God's hand in how he spoke to Joseph, too, so that he would embrace this child Mary was about to bear. It was all part of God's divine plan, not just for Mary and Joseph, but for the whole world, for all of eternity. It must have been a joy raising a perfect child. <laughs> Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully man. That means Mary went through many of the same challenges we face with little kids, you know, as a child learns to walk and to talk and to navigate life. She also endured the hardest thing that a mother ever could, watching her child die. But that is why Jesus was born, to be sacrificed. Can you imagine the agonizing pain in her mother's heart as her son suffered, as he was 
tortured and mocked and eventually crucified. In John 19, it says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. There's something so sweet in that, that even during his most painful moment, Jesus cared so deeply for his mother. She was chosen by God to raise the Savior of the world, and she was blessed. I pray this Mother's Day you are blessed, even if life hasn't gone the way that you hoped. If you've enjoyed this episode of Therese Talk, be sure to subscribe and look for our next episode on Tuesday morning. If you really loved it, consider making a gift to Family Life, the ministry this podcast is a part of. Just go to familylife.org and find out more about what we do. Did you know Family Life offers a variety of podcasts? You can get up to date with Family Life news or have some time with Family Life kids. There's the sunny side, filled with real life stories of God's goodness. And if that makes sense. A Family Life original podcast where they talk about what life is like as a Christian in your 20s. They're all free and on demand at familylife.org slash podcast.